I wrote strictly in meter for two years. So if that ain't a whitewashing of my voice, I don't know what is. However, that I take pride in that two years that I spent writing metrically. I wrote in blank verse, I wrote sonnets. It helped sharpen my teeth in a way that no other um, form could have. Just writing in form. Um, now they weren't poems that should be published. They weren't poems that I even share with folks. But, there were, but it was an important step. And I think right now, and this is one of the, like social media is amazing. It's great. I also think though it puts an added pressure on young poets to have to publish and publish immediately. I didn't have that. I was writing in San Diego and as an undergrad. I was already older than everybody else. I was 21 when I went to start it as a freshman. And I spent like seven years getting my bachelor's degree because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. That and I'd get depressed and I'd miss like a week of school. Yeah, you know, like for the first three semesters. Um, that's not, like, you know, we all, you know, I just, I just didn't handle it very well. <laughs> you know? um, and, but I like, I didn't have any of that pressure. I didn't even have the pressure of being whitewashed. Like my parents aren't college educated. I just was like, this is what a poem is. Um, but I also was like fiercely holding on to wanting to have me in a poem. I just didn't know how to do it. And I wouldn't have learned how to do that without these elements of craft. I would say that craft is passe right now. The preaching of craft of a poet. They're like, you're a fucking white poet. What are you talking about, dude? Stop whitewashing. I disagree. I disagree. I said in that last poem, I said, you know, perfection and beauty were never white aesthetics. Yeah, I think of, my, of myself as being descended from kings, you know, as a powerful Aztec warrior in my own way. And, you know, I have another poem in, in, in PTHD where I say, you know, uh, there weren't enough Spaniards to fuck the Indian out of us. It's that I think that to a certain extent, we... We purposefully and not so purposefully subject ourselves and be, while we are also being subjected in various ways. And one has to be able to figure out what they want. And for me, I'm gonna fiercely hold on to I, who I am. And part of that is this analytic, like geeky craft dude. Another part is a dude who listens to trap music and like was stealing cars and trying to shoot people. Like that's just who I am. And I'm okay with those contradictions. I've always held those sort of contradictions. You know, like the sort of like being a good dude inside and making a lot of mistakes. So, um, I don't know if I agree with some of my contemporaries with these things. I think that it's our job to hold on to who we are while the world tries to change us. And we assimilate and integrate the forces and the strategies that help us become better people. So that's what I think.